Hey man, stay man, it's your boy Big Dreams. Welcome back to the channel. Before we carry on any further with this video, make sure y'all like, make sure y'all comment. Most importantly, make sure y'all subscribe and hit that post notification bell. Send it to all oh, man. We is back with another banging video, back with another reaction video, man. And today we are reacting to a trapologist video title. 15 rappers who attacked interviewers. Better dig in here and see what's going on. I'm not gonna make the opening of this video too long. All I ask is that y'all smash that like button so this video can rank higher in the algorithm. Go crazy in the comments. Let me know what you want me to react to. And if you're watching me and you're not subscribed, man, subscribe. That's all I ask. I'm finna go ahead and dig in, man. Leave it alone! Yes, sir! On my soul! Hey, yo, listen, y'all. I've been doing four years, y'all. Everybody who has ever put a hand Pause, 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 pause. Did Buddy just get up a cut it with a Bible in his hand? That's not Do it. Hey, no, 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 One rapper attacked an interviewer for joking around in his interview too much. And Gierbo broke an interviewer's thirty thousand dollar Rolex since he was mad at the interviewer. These are times rappers attack stupid interviewers. And we gotta start things off with Lil House Phone. Because House completely went off on Adam 22 on a No Jumper interview back in 2023. House had fallen out with Adam 22 and they were talking about it on the podcast. Because House Phone was one of the original hosts of No Jumper and had been around since the beginning. But Adam did a podcast with a trans woman named Gracie Jane where she claimed she hooked up with House Phone. Adam tried editing it out, but people figured out who they were talking about and it blew up. House Phone felt betrayed and got mad at Adam. Adam for exposing him for no reason. So he confronted him about it one day on a live stream. And he expressed to Adam that both his rep and personal life were permanently ruined and that he really felt hurt since Adam sold him out for views. Being a good friend, bro, you sold me down the river for 30,000 views. But 50, you really think views, that? Bro. You really think that? Like bro, you, you actually permanently altered my life. Do you you saw that? those text messages you and you really believe that altered. I did that to you on purpose. I don't believe that you did it on purpose. You handled it poorly afterwards. You didn't hear the sincerity in my voice. You didn't hear the, the worrisomeness in my voice. I did, and I that's like why you, I told them to delete it. You would have deleted the whole interview, Adam. I mean, in retrospect, yes, I wish we did that. It's all I wish, I wish afterwards. Well, I, can't I had predict to talk the future, to my... Dude. He even mentioned how his whole family was calling him up to make sure he was good, since his mother had recently passed, too. She had to call me because my other family members was worried that I was going to miss who... Bro, I don't give a f bro. But how can I? You're sit so. Here? You couldn't sit here and talk to me like this last week. Later on in the interview, House also mentions the apology Adam gave on the news, since he thought Adam was disrespecting his mother with the way he handled it. Adam shot back, saying that he didn't really mean it like that, especially since he paid for House's mother's funeral, and that's when House crashed out, since he was tired of Adam's disrespect. And then let's let's move forward to that apology you gave when you're on news you're talking about yeah he's been going through the mom he's been going through the hell you're talking about the person that raised me that birthed me my best friend that died oh just he's been going through the mom but you, you are you actually acting like i have some kind of disrespect for your mom when you're i was paid for the funeral as soon as it happened just because did he just get up and grab a cup and throw it just because buddy he he picked up a cup <laughs> he 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 picked up a cup hold on let me get right right and that wasn't the only time House Phone had to check Adam for doing too much. Because just a few months before the interview, Adam made a joke about House Phone's mother being beat up by his father when he was younger, calling her a bee. He was oh, around man. when I was like little until like elementary school. That's when him and my mom broke up. But like, I'm going to just be completely honest here right now. He beat my mom one time and I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes, and he literally almost killed her. I know, right? I know, I know. Actually, your uncle gonna be like, you know this guy in little house phone with no jumper? That is That's my nephew. That is your son. And I ain't seen him since he was four. Yeah, yeah for real. It was what it was. <laughs> hey, relax, bro. I. Hey, not for a friend. You know, you see, I'm sensitive. Out of pocket, bro. Uh, but that wasn't the only time Lil House Phone flipped out on an interview. 
because he also had something similar go down on Biggest Bro Entertainment. After the whole Adam-22 drama, House Phone left the No Jumper team, along with a few other people, to work on his own podcast platform called Biggest Bro Entertainment. Since staying on No Jumper after the fallout would have hurt the show and their relationship even more. During one of his episodes on Bro Entertainment with Blasi and Yuri, he almost attacked Potlord, who was also hosting the show, since he wasn't letting him finish his point. Potlin was talking about how Adidas and Nike weren't even close, and how DC was bigger competition for Nike, since he's never seen anyone wear Adidas. Actually, he has like Adidas, Adidas. Okay, like listen. at home. Okay, I'm listen. assuming he's European. Okay, listen, listen, just, just listen. Okay, so like, like I don't. when you make like like when you say stuff like that, like you have to. No, no, this way, no, no, no. Let me please? say what I'm saying. Always no, 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 I'm not even, bro, you're not even letting me say what I'm saying. I'm saying from your perspective of, like, people that we be around or whatever, like, it, like you're thinking in a small box when you say that. You And on a global, large scale, bro, it's literally one of the top three sneaker brands of, like, in history. Yeah, so it's DC. I was just trying to correct them, since Adidas is probably one of the top three biggest sneaker brands of all time. But Pot just kept cutting them off. A lot of people in other, in other states... Deep. What does that have to do with anything? You said, what are you talking about? You, said so you just said DC. Adidas. Bro, this, I you swear just to God, said bro. that Adidas. You literally irritate me, bro. You literally bro, think you, you know just everything. Bro, because you just saying stupid. Like, the two continued, and later in the interview, House brought up the topic of Pot's drinking addiction. But Pot shut him up, and that's when House flashed out, since he was tired of being cut mid-sentence. For hey, all, that, beer. all that, all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be- yeah, all that, all that, yeah. Like I said, I'm getting paid for all that. Wait, hold I'm on. I'm getting paid for all paid in front fetty. I'm getting paid for all getting paid in front fetty right here. Yeah, I'm yeah, getting paid for all that. Yeah, all that. You getting paid all that. Yeah, 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 all that. Yeah, yeah, all that. All that. Yeah, yeah, all that. All that. Hold on, hold on. You're not broke, though, you. Uh, you a drunk. That's what you are. Good job, beat your ass. Oh, yeah, see, look, them fighting words right there. Them fighting words right there. Them fighting words right there. The minute, the minute you and somebody having a heated conversation, the conversation can be as heated. Y'all could be yelling as loud as possible. The minute one person say, I bet you ain't whooping me, or I bet you I'll beat your ass, bro. Hey, bro, come on to the parking lot and see me real quick. Come see me in the parking lot. Those are five words right there. Five words. Was also on an interview with Crab Culture. The interview started off with the interviewer trolling Skinny with the block of cheese, since Skinny is known for snitching. There you go. What's this? That's for you. Um, you know, just in case you get hungry throughout the interview, that's for you. Cheese? And you could tell Skinny wasn't really feeling the dude. But soon after, the interviewer randomly brought up a statistic about women's satisfaction rates in bed, and things got pretty weird. I want to read you a statistic, okay? This is a real statistic. Ready? 63% of women ages 22 to 39 have reportedly stated that the number one factor of which oftentimes leaves them dissatisfied in the bedroom is due to a lack of rhythm and consistency of motion from their male partners. So I thought of this, ready? What if there was a song specifically for... Now that you can play official scratch ticket... That's a random statistic to bring up during an interview. Haven't. And all these guys had to do was just follow the beat, right? And the beat guided them to have that consistency in the bedroom. Right? You with me? Uh, what are you talking about? Things slowly started to cool off, and it seemed like the interviewer was starting to ask some legitimate questions. Uh, is Poker the Juice still your manager? Poker, that's my name. I'm Poker. But, nah, we're not on no business terms, but... Poker. He, he, he the dude then followed up by asking Skinny about his facial paralysis. Since Skinny came out with the video back in 2022, revealing his Bell's palsy diagnosis, which caused some paralysis on the left side of his face. You, you have trouble drinking even, you know, and sometimes I was wondering if, if it affects your ability to so, speak. Like, I can still rap, I can still talk, I can still drink. Yeah. It's like, like your man's right here. Yeah. He's goofy. You see how he said he had a trigger? Yeah. So, I'll be rapping, I'll be drinking, I'll be eating, whatever I'm doing, you feel me? Yeah. 
it just comes out of nowhere. Like my face would just get stuck. Like, but then the interviewer made a joke about it, being the reason why his music has been so trash for the past few years. And that's what sets Skinny off, because he crashed out for real this time. So that explains why your music sounds like. Keep playing with me, my. I'm this, this disabled. Like, I will still smack out of you. You understand your whole style? Smack this. Smack cameraman. Smack this goofy. Oh, oh he's smacking smack, everybody. Smack. <laughs> Press play on y'all. Stop playing with me. All right, all right. That my boy. All right, all right. Why? What, what's up? What I do to you? Must be real. Skirty, skirty. What? You, you see how his his life flash before his eyes. He now let's move on to Sixteen Shot because even though Sixteen isn't a rapper, he's known in the rap scene for interviewing a lot of rappers. So one day, Sixteen was on No Jumper getting interviewed by Flacco, one of the members of the No Jumper team. During the interview, Sixteen tells Flacco it's like he's playing both sides since Flacco is cool with Bandman Kevo, who's one of Sixteen's ops, but trying to be cool with him at the same time. It's like you f with me, Daniel Sapoli too. How was that our fault, bro? Cause you said, bro. We, what like, you mean? How's your fault? You standing behind? Follow me a cop chase, and you standing behind, showing you the right. I don't want you being on my side, bro. But stop, bro. Stop. I think you're like, touching. Right, gang. Sixteen then calls Flacco Kevo to piss him off, since Flacco was meat riding Bandman Kevo, and Kevo is the person Sixteen has beef with. So Sixteen tells Flacco to stop playing with him before he smacks him. And that's when things get crazy because Sixteen they, does they this. They just next. having a spit war. Just said, let the man talk. What'd you say, Kevo? <laughs> bro, suck like, hey, hey, stop playing with me. Hey, do it. Hey, no, 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 no. So they just start having a spit war, cuz. What? <laughs> cuz started spitting on Security was there because things could have gone way worse. Oh, but this man. next interviewer wasn't as lucky because Young Vado went mega viral after his confrontation with interviewer Coco Show hit the net. He was on an episode of the Trapland podcast with Coco Show, and Coco used to be someone he was cool with up until their recent fallout. Halfway through the Trapland interview, Coco started going off on Young Vado, saying that he was just another clout chasing rapper that he wasn't really about that hood life and that he let their beef slide since if they both went at it someone was gonna get bodied oh, oh, bad. Oh, oh. now uh, I took, I, me and bill was arguing on the internet i knew he right i knew he so what i do i i what i do question why is he holding the bible And when I say that, listen, don't don't take that the wrong way. I love God. But in this particular situation, if you sitting up here dissing somebody to their face, why are you holding the Bible like that? Like, you 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 feel what I'm saying? You feel like, come on now, you gotta protect the word of God, man. Ain't no Then you cussing with the Bible in your hand. That's diabolical. On my soul, the only reason why I let you let you alone and let you rock, you know why? Because if me and you go at it, somebody's gonna die. On my soul. In your cut, in your look, in your Bottle shot back since he knew Coco wasn't really about that action. And that's when Coco followed up by saying that somebody is yet to shut him up for talking smack. And that's when young Bottle threw Coco an uppercut since he was tired of him saying too much. Bro, it, 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 it's, it's more to it. It's more to it. That's why I let you rock. Let so leave it alone. On, yes, sir. Yes, sir. On my soul. Hey, yo, listen, y'all. I've been for four years, y'all. I've been talking to everybody. Who has ever put a hand to Boom! Oh, Jesus. And soon after the incident, Ooh, Bono took to IG live with Relly, one of his homies. To but it's like, bro. <laughs> what makes me look at Buddy and say he's a clown is the fact that you're sitting up here telling another grown man, oh, blah, 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 some, somebody gonna die on my soul. Like, bro, calm down. <laughs> calm down, bro. It ain't that serious. Then you sitting up here with a Bible in your hand thinking you preaching to church or something, but you yelling to another grown man's face, Somebody gonna die. How are you gonna yell somebody gonna die with a Bible in your hand, bro? That's diabolical work. You playing with God right there. You can't do that, bro. You can't do that. Buddy came and when he hit him, he 
He hit him with this part. He 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 hit him with this part. He 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 hit him with that part. This part. That's instant karma right there. In the situation with Coco and tell his side of the story. He told Turning your hobby into a business, but you don't know where to start. He told Relly that Coco had offered him $100 to disrespect him on camera, and that he was low-key fine with Coco's act, up until Coco started disrespecting his people and saying that people were going to die if something went down. Let's keep this, right? Because you know who my cousin is. My blood cousin, Kate Dove. Kate Dove? Oh, no, nah, that's yeah. my heart. Yeah, that's my that's my biological cousin, nah, right? Nah, Coco is nowhere. I got to choose the side. It's favoritism. Nah, nah listen. He knows Coco this. Didn't, Coco didn't even know I gave him a pass the first time. Yeah. When you, when, when, when you cut my cousin and Coco didn't even know You then kicked up to suck my... Okay. No, 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 Coco. Now my son kicked up his... This man... I had a kicked up. Are you stupid? Right? I'm going to keep it a buck. I didn't know Coco was really built like that because, like, when we was debating it, Coco's the entertainer knows how to draw audience and like i told trapland this is word to my mother i'm like if he never used that word suck my thing but he kept his shenanigans going you would have seen me look stupid in the interview coco was really cooking me the interview wasn't long but he was cooking me but once he said to suck my is gonna die bro i don't want to hear nothing after that but before the live was done coco got his say and he really rattled off on bottle started a war but okay I, wait, I, 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 Diabolical, cool, bro. You what? The minute you say something like that to me, hey, bro. Oh, uh, where you at? Hey, bro. Come on. Let's 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 go ahead and run it. Cause you you pushing it right now. You pushing it right now. Come on, bro. The minute, bro. It's 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 certain things that you just don't let come out your mouth. I'm a firm believer that it's certain things that you do not do. It's certain things that you do not joke around with. I'm a firm believer of all that. I'm a firm believer if you say certain things, joke around certain things, that there is instant punishment that comes right behind that unexpectedly. Load of open thoughts with Funny Marco. <clears throat> Everything started off cool with Southside and Funny Marco bouncing questions off each other. But a few minutes into the interview, Gierbo joined in, and the two pretty much took over the show and were very disrespectful about it. Oh God! Oh, you thought it was just me? <laughs> oh. Where'd you get that jacket from? I don't know. Where you get these jackets from? They made me wear it to come to college. Do we got work in this state? Oh, like a state. I get it. Go ahead, call this stupid. And we need that money back when we finish. That's our payment. You the referee. Stupid. <laughs> Referees do be trusted. Hat from, bro. That's what I want to know. Uh, I got this from Target. Nowhere. Found it. Target? Let me see this stupid. <laughs> 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 and the disrespect didn't stop because for most of the interview, G. Erbo and Southside kept picking at Marco and trying to play him like he was some kind of homeless person or nobody. What you got on? That's the I got some Steve Why the f got no shoes on, though, man? Yeah, I just it's actually cheap said, like, I've been wearing cheap socks too, though. I ain't gonna lie, but it's like, when you wear cheap socks, they gotta look clean. Got they can't look recycled. Socks, yeah, bro, you can have my shoes, bro. Oh, you you nine and a half, bro. Nine and a half. Actually, nine and a half for real, bro. It don't matter if they was a yeah, I count it. You finna get it. Count what I gave him, bro. Let me count it. Dude, shut up. All right, bet. We got you, bro. Don't trip. You dressed, I thought you was, like, homeless. I thought this was all, like, a front. That's why I was, like, I told, you know, <laughs> I'm going like, to with the cup, and I'm going to fill this cup up. Like, you know hey, what I'm saying? Hey, but look, guess what? It's what I'm like. You trying to Thankfully, the two eventually signed off since you could tell Marco really wasn't enjoying himself, but not without taking a few shots at the studio. I like the way you put your bedroom together and made, you know, like a show. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Oh, that was disrespectful. But that wasn't all, because after the interview, a clip left out of the final cut surfaced online and went viral of Southside throwing Marco's $30,000 Rolex watch and breaking it. No face, you ain't got no face. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro. Hey, hey, shut up. All right, let's get it. I'm giving you more respect than you deserve. So I'm coming. 
Friends had mixed reviews, and some even said what happened to him was fair. Seeing as Funny Marco used to prank and clown people out back in the day. One Facebook commenter said, I feel like the episode was cool since they were just going with his vibe. But Marco replied, nah, they broke my $30,000 watch and called him here. I don't talk to people like that. But now, let's move on to Mayno. Because Mayno is an older OG, and a YouTuber named Booba tried joking around with Mayno. During an interview, like he could beat him up and take his chain. As Booba goes up to Mayno to interview him, Mayno lets Booba know not to say anything crazy, since he is already not in the best mood. But Booba starts the interview off by talking crazy, saying his objective is to snatch some chains. I came over here... Like, don't say nothing crazy though. Nah, I'm, 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 I'm just saying like I came over here like my objective over here today was to you know what I'm saying snatch some chains. You feel what I'm saying? Like I already you should try that. Nah, I'm saying I already. I, really I, 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 Booba keeps joking around, so Mano goes on to ask him if he wants his moment. Since he buddy, wants to chill with all the buddy looks like he's about 20, 21, maybe twenty two to twenty three years old. You over here surrounded by a gaggle. Of grown men look like they're about 40 years of age and up you're toast you're toast you finna go tell a grown a literally grown man surrounded by a bunch of grown men i feel like snatching some chains and buddy and i already told you like hey don't say nothing stupid Are you still gonna say something stupid I understand that they be trying to get their content and stuff in like that, man. But everybody's not the one to play with. Everybody handles stuff differently, man. Because once you get some people started, it'd be hard to get them to stop. That's when Booba starts stuttering and continues asking crazy questions. Why, so why they keep looking at me like that? Like, they're making me feel a type of way. You want your moment, right? Huh? You want your moment, right? Wait, wait, what you mean you won't get it? Nah, 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 nah. I guarantee you No, not like that. I'm just saying, like, I guarantee you I, get so look, on everything I love, sure, you're going to so get I, your moment. I, but it, he, I don't know how old he is, but you can tell he, he, he's a grown, grown man. He a grown, grown man for sure. He's really a grown man. He look like he just broke 21. And you just over there playing with them folks like that. I can't borrow a chain. I can't borrow a chain. You want to borrow my chain? Yeah, let me, let me borrow it. Let me, let me put on your chain so I can see how it feels. Mano warns Booba multiple times to chill out. And you could easily tell he was getting annoyed. Since Booba was wasting his time with the interview. But that's when Booba asked Mano a question about how bad he would whoop him. And that's when things went left. Because he does this next. Uh, look, look, quick question, right? Now, uh, look, look, quick question, right? On a scale of 1 to 10, right? How badly, right, you think I could, like, beat you? Oh, 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 and ain't nobody try to break them up. They just stand there looking. You can hear him say to Booba, didn't I tell you not to play with me? You have to be careful when playing with some people because everyone doesn't have the same sense of humor. Now, let's move on to the rapper Petey Weestraw because Petey starts the interview and everything is cool. But the interviewer tries picking on Petey after Petey doesn't know the exact age he moved to the state he lives in now. Local artist Petey Weestraw. What's good, Straw? Hey, it's good to have you here at Birmingham. Unsigned but major bio interviews. And uh, I just want to ask you a few questions so the fans can get to know you a little better as an artist. That's cool with you? That's cool with me. Well, I bet. So first off, we start off by asking you, where you from, man? Tell everybody where you from. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, the 504, you know what I'm saying? Moved up here to 205 Birmingham, Alabama when I was about what, three, six, nine years old. When you, was, when you was about three, six, nine years old. Yeah. Three, six, nine, like. Yeah, man. Seconds later, the interviewer's phone starts ringing. PD fires back at the interviewer, saying that's disrespectful, and he's messing up his interview. From there, things start to get tense between the two. They can be edited out. I don't know. But, um... I mean, like I said, they can be edited out. Calm down. Hello? I ain't gonna cap. That's, 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 that's crazy work. The interviewer That's crazy didn't work. Petey at all and talked on the phone during half of the interview. You could tell that Petey was stressed about that. That's crazy work. And and see, look, that that be the thing right there. And I'm I'm sure a lot of interviewers who have podcasts know this, bro. But little little simple stuff like that can mess up your bag, man. 
little simple stuff like that can really, really mess up your bag. And it's it's just a simple fact. Buddy set up here, oh, it could be edited out, but the simple fact that you even set up there and answered the phone still just diabolical work. You know what I'm saying? Like, to some people, it may not have been a big deal, but clearly to Buddy, he's pressed about that. But everybody's different. Though. My bad, Strong. Um, That's when the interviewer let Petey know he apologizes for that. But Petey tells him he's going to let that one slide. The interviewer goes back to asking him questions, but with one question, Petey doesn't answer. So the interviewer makes a smart statement saying that isn't what he asked. Man, I was gonna watch you and call him some emergency. Will you come back to me? Say what? Wait, 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 pause. If it was your wife and it's some emergency stuff, all right, that's understandable. That's understandable. That's understandable right there. You know what I'm saying? If you ask me, that's understandable. But Buddy was like, I don't give a F, that's disrespectful. I ain't, I ain't gonna cap, you say that. And it's my wife like, hey bro, you gonna have to see me. You know what I'm saying? You gonna have to see me. But eat, look, listen, 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 listen. I feel like in a situation like that, if I'm an interviewer, I honestly, bro, like the way I am, my phone would already be on do not disturb, airplane mode, probably even turned off. So if my wife was to call me, I wouldn't know until after the interview. That's just me. But if my phone is like up, up, you know what I'm saying? And I peep the phone, and I, I may not answer the call the first time, but if a text come through, this, this, that, like if it's like of an emergency or like I see this, it, like it's an emergency, I'm going to have to step away so I can take that. But I can understand if it's his wife on some emergency type stuff. But to be honest, bro, it's just, it's different strokes for different folks. Everybody's different. What I'm saying is, back, back to the interview. It's an interview. But buddy, buddy pressed that about that, um, it was that come answering that call. At the end of the day, no, we all have, we, we all have, you on that slide. Let everybody know, we know what started you, what did you Man, I'm trying to reach the top. Universal technical is Wait, hold on. Ain't 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 this the dude that pulled out the Draco mid interview? Ain't this the dude that pulled out the Draco mid interview when he Lately, felt like he was being stuff. played and with? In an interview with Hoodridge Kevin, Brooke was high off lane and getting annoyed with the interviewer because he felt like the interviewer was asking him too many questions. Like, 
Did he just pull the Draco out like randomly, bro? He asked you that. You want to see what happened? I mean, I was just asking, bro. I was just trying to see. Time for an oil change, Philip. And you can tell Buddy was on something, too. Because he was smiling. And then all of a sudden, his yeah. face just... Happened, bro. Hey, bro. I can Come on, hold on. Let me go back to that part real quick. Buddy was literally, like, all smiles. And then out of nowhere, his, 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 his face just, yeah, like, like, dropped. Bro. You can tell he was on something. Look how his face just changed. Then he's smoking too. You looking ass, get up. <laughs> you wanna see what happened? I mean, I was just asking, bro. I was just trying to see what happened, bro. I can show you, turn it on. Brooke warned Kevin that things could get ugly if he kept asking him a certain police question. But a few minutes later, Brooke gets up and walks out of the interview since he was pissed that Kevin kept asking him federal questions. He got even madder when Kevin asked him if he needed an Uber. Hold on, did he just pull a Draco out the pants? You need a ride? I said I got a call, my... I need a ride. I get to an Uber. What's up with you, bro? Did he just pull a Drake out the pants? Alright, I was sad with him. Hey, Buddy, you know what I'm saying? Did Buddy just pull a Drake out the pants? Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, bro. 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 I said I got a call my That phone. crazy. You know, right? I get to Uber. What's up with you, bro? I'm good, man. Alright, I was sad one. I look like I need a Uber. <laughs> Most like definitely, about, sir. Oh, like, you ain't even on planet Earth no more. Actually, pop the interviewer since he was extremely high and irritated. And sometimes it's best not to ask rappers about things they've done in the past either, since it'll make them mad. The Island Boys were on the Danza project, and before coming on the show, they had just gone viral not too long ago for kissing each other. A YouTuber known as La Mike was also on the show, and he asked the Island Boys if they were going to kiss it out since they were arguing. That's when they get pissed and stand up, letting La Mike know that they'll whoop him right now. What's in your what? You fine? Bro, you, all of you, you, bro. You right? Pause, pause, pause. Bro, I, that's New Orleans lingo for like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 For a fact, they ain't scaring nobody. One of the island boys talks about how he doesn't care what haters and people on the internet say about him. That's what Danza says that they feel that way. Why do they get mad when somebody brings up the topic of them kissing? The island boys let Danza know they'll tear up all the podcast equipment for bringing that topic up again, and they almost fight. They gotta say, man, they're gonna hate on you regardless. But, but you say, they gotta say. Yo. That's what you say. Right? But at the end of the day, let's keep it 100 because we got both of y'all here too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what's going on with with, with you two kissing each other? And <laughs> That's the second time. <laughs> I would love to see you try that. Bro, what are you talking hey, I would love to see you try that. But now, though, I, I, I honestly feel like in some situations, some of the interviewers be reaching it. They, they really be reaching it. Because... Buddy already said, hey, y'all going to kiss it out. That started one fight. And then you come along and say, hey, what's up with you two kissing? Like, hey, bro, you, you reaching it right there. You you know what I'm saying? And I, I, ain't, I ain't saying he wrong. That's his platform. But that, that was reaching it right there. If that's something that, that you know set them off, you know what I'm saying? And that's your guess, like, like I said earlier, different strokes for different folks, but I wouldn't personally disrespect nobody like that. 
I, I wouldn't personally disrespect nobody like that. But at the same time, if it gets to a point where like stuff starts to get heated, I'm not just finna let you disrespect me or this what I have going on. You know what I'm saying? So. But Danza look like he'll slap the mess out of both of them. He look like he'll slap the mess out of both of them. Let's move on a little Kelpie because he was on an episode of No Jumper. With that I think I seen this. Suspect I seen this. Then he bust buddy on um, mouth up or something like that. On a channel called Soft White Underbelly. I think I seen this. With two women, he was pimping. After the interview came out, a lot of people were clowning Kelpie for the suit and gold chain he was wearing. They said he was wearing a pimp costume and wasn't really living the. Now that you can play official scratch tickets on my. I think I seen this, bro. If, if if it happened the way I've seen it once, I think I've seen this before. If it happened the way I think it's going to happen. That's what made this No Jumper interview get dangerous. Almighty Suspect had allegedly been involved with the pimp game before. And he aired out Kelpie during the episode and said, Get everybody to understand, kind of like kind of like blackface. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of like, like it, it like a costume. You, you get what I'm saying? Right. It's like, he uh, came in here, he came in here wearing... In his head, like, oh, this is what pimps is supposed to look like. I got my little dollar sign chain. Kelby wasn't really rocking with the disrespect suspect was giving him. And he said that Almighty Suspect was just hating because he was new to the game. But that's when it started getting heated. And Almighty Suspect said, I don't feel like you're that's new to Hey, white people. Like no, 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 no. I feel like you're not new to. I feel like you're an impersonator for your SoundCloud career. You're not new to. I don't even focus on music. You came up in I here focus talking on about the streets. You, I focus you on came getting money. You talking about you professing old school and then you was like, we, yeah. we actually, where you learned. I and mean, then you said, yeah, I watched you. I watched Shark on YouTube. Like, get yeah. out of here. Guys, no, I not I have no You can watch on, on, on YouTube and impersonate. Get the in the street. And, get and Kelpie and Almighty Suspect kept going back and forth <coughs> about who was the bigger pimp until this happened. No, no pimp. Kelpie the, Kelpie the clap. No, what? I didn't hear. Franklin knows who I am. He knows who the. Yeah, said what? Every day. I said, said Franklin knows who the. Who you call it? On you and thankfully, security was there to break the fight, seeing as it could have ended much worse. But that's nothing compared to what happened when Adam 22 got a strap put in his head in the Ooh. middle of an interview. Adam 22 was hosting a live stream on the No Jumper channel when a dude rushed in and told him to give him all his money. Luckily, Adam's security hopped in and knocked the dude out. It turns out the robber didn't have a real gun, but nobody knew that in the moment, and it looked like something that's crazy. Was about to die. But a lot of people called cap on the situation and said it was just a stunt for attention because it looked like Adam 22 was laughing. At one point, later, Adam 22 did an interview with DJ Vlad where he said, "On through is like, like I'm gonna die, but maybe this is a joke. Maybe this is my friend. Maybe somebody's doing a prank on me." Because in that moment, and like why people said that I, or people were freaked out that I said like he he, I laughed. It's like I really didn't know if it was a joke or not. It seemed kind of more likely that it would be a prank or it would be something somebody found than that it would be real. And what makes the situation even crazier is that someone else came into the studio with another fake gun just two days later. Adam 22 told DJ Vlad that he was in the bathroom when he heard something going down outside. When he came out, there was a gun laying on the floor. And one of the employees told Adam that a dude had just came in looking for him. But now, let's move on to Charleston White. Because he completely went off on DJ U in an interview back in late 2022. In which he poured Charleston out Charleston White, a pepper spray, you boy. You better stay away from him. And King Vine's family. Charleston White tells DJU that he doesn't care about King Von since Von was a killer. And that's when DJU tells him not to say that about them. How did y'all die? King Von was a killer. My mama had two sons locked up for murder. And my mama let everybody know I'm not in agreement in what my son's done. I have a look. So this is what I'm saying. You can't make me care about King Von, my mom. I don't know. Charleston then goes on to get even madder since he helped WG Duck's mother and felt like he had the right to talk about her. But DJU told him to chill. That's when Charleston White completely flashes out and pulls out his strap on DJU. Behind me says, I'll help. So somebody else helped him. And I ain't. Charleston White gonna pepper spray you or shoot you. you boy, you been a mess with him. Since y'all got so much to say.
Charleston didn't end up smoking someone during the interview because things were pretty heated. But it's a good thing no one threw hands, unlike this next rapper, because Compton rapper AD allegedly had beef with BMX Vail back in 2021. <coughs> Things got heated. AD was on the No Jumper podcast one day when Vail pulled up. And it seemed like AD was really ready for action. Because as soon as Vail came in, AD stood up and it was on sight. Uh oh, bro. Hell in this mother. You know what I'm uh, saying? Hell in this mother. Yes, oh, hold on. Oh. Oh, bro. Hey, hold oh, on. Oh, oh, they ain't playing. They not playing. Soon after the altercation, AD took immediately to the got the to explain the situation. Since a lot of fans didn't know whether or not they were for real. Turns out, the beef wasn't that serious. But that it had sprung up from a joke AD made about being able to whoop everybody in the studio. And thankfully, it was just a prank. Seeing as this could have easily turned out like the little Kelpie and Suspects incident. But speaking of rappers, one rapper confessed to getting Fulio killed in his interview. And another rapper admitted to scamming a man for over $100,000. So click this video to see rappers' most disturbing confessions in interviews. That's crazy. That's crazy. You want to... That is crazy. But man, listen, y'all go crazy in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about some of the situations that went down in this video. And this is the end of the video, man. Make sure y'all like, make sure y'all comment. Most importantly, make sure y'all subscribe and hit that post notification bell. Set it to all. All social media links will be in the description. The link to the previous reaction video will be there as well. Follow me on all my social medias. Click the link to the previous reaction video and watch that whole video after you watch this whole video. And don't forget that I am partner with SeanArmor.com, the number one producer in auto detailing products. The link to Sean Armour will be in the description. My promo code will be there as well, man. And as far as Sean Armour, I'm still putting everything in the description. I'm still partnering with them. Don't know if the website is up or not. I'm going to have to ask them to get an update. And I'm going to keep y'all posted on when the actual website will be back up. So just know I'm putting the stuff in the description, but the website is down. But listen, that's besides the point. I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all for showing me love back. And we out this thing, man, for real.